Fred Film Radio, I'm Laura de la Corte. We are here with Mihai Minka, and uh, is the director of To the North in the section Horizonte of Venice 79. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask is about your, you know, moral movie. And um, at, like at the very end of the movie, there is a scene in which Dimash True uh, Dumitru, sorry, Dimitri. yeah, Dimitri. Um, and Joel uh, are talking, and he says, "I'm a person." Like he wanted to reaffirm like a fundamental concept that has been lost during the film. I wanted to ask, do you want the audience in that scene to be on the side, to choose a side of the character, which character, you know, uh, and why or why not? Uh, first of all, I would say that this is one of the uh, one of the nicest questions I've ever been asked because you're the first oh, one to you. to remark that thing, which is really important. I think is the most important line in the film, actually. Uh, yes, uh, but I I didn't want. I mean, my intention was never for uh, to make the audience to take part in one way or another. Just to have like. The whole film is constructed out of people talking about morals, about what they think is right, what they think is wrong. But at the end, during that scene, it's for the first time that somebody actually comes down from the concept to real life and says, OK, this is good, this is bad, whatever, but I'm a real person. I'm a real human being you know, in front of you. So it's just maybe I would take it more maybe a, like a wake up call and just say, you're looking at a man not a good or a bad or a, I don't know, but just like a man and a person, that's, uh, that's, that, was, that was the intention. Okay, okay. And at the end, do you think that Joel has lost his faith? Uh, according to that, according to what you said, do you want to show that, you know, mm. choosing between a moral values is difficult and to maintain the faith at the end because you don't see the people want, in some way you judge men because you want to know if they are good or bad to mm -hmm. decide how to treat them. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no, no. I, I mean, uh, the, f the, uh, the, f the first script, I think, it was when he's, you, you said you, you already saw the film, so I can speak about it. The, uh, the last thing that he says in the film, which now are a poem, are uh, based uh, yeah. are actually a poem a Filip uh, written by a Filipino writer, were actually words from the Bible written by me, which was a little bit closer to the idea of losing the faith. But then, as I started, we you know we started shooting and talking about it. I said, "Well, who am I to to judge like how would a person lose its faith or not?" And it's so, you know, like de demonstrating something. And I talked with uh, Soliman, the actor, and I said, look, I don't really want this part of the Bible because it feels so, I don't know, out of this world. I said, just tell me a poem. It's whatever you want to say. He chose the poem, actually. And uh, I think that's more fair in the end. I don't know. The, re the answer is I don't know that if he loses his faith, but I don't want to be the person who says he lost his faith, you know? Yeah. How did you choose, um, actually, for the main part of Joel? Mm -hmm. How was the process of the casting? The actors, you mean? Yeah. Well, we had very, very little money in the first part. So uh, going on a casting in Manila was out of the question, or in Philippines. So what I did was uh, uh, I, I really love, and I've always loved, Love Diaz. They're a great director. I just spent like maybe a month or maybe a month and a half watching all his films or more his recent films uh, and searching for faces that I like and searching for parts in those movies that make me emotional somehow, made me react emotional to them. And then I found all three actors were found that way, all the three Filipino actors. And then we spent like a lot of time, maybe a year, a year and a half, just talking on... Um, on, uh, I don't know, life calls or everything. Uh, just trying to get to know each other. It was like a jump, uh, uh, what's what's the name in English? A leap of faith? Yeah, yeah. yeah a leap of faith. Exactly. But it paid off really good. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. I can assure this. Can I have the last question? Um, you know, the, uh, these facts are based on the true story of the 1996, if I'm right. And I wanted to ask, 
um, it's like something that started from a radio documentary. How did you find out? I, did, uh, I found out about the radio documentary from actually from IDOP. Okay. Uh, but he uh, he remembered quite he remembered it quite vaguely. He saw it like maybe ten years before or something. Oh, he heard it. Sorry. Uh, and he didn't really know the story. He just remembered that it was something about a Romanian hidden inside of a ship uh, by a Filipino sailor, uh, and there was something with a Bible on it. But when he told me the story, because his memories were so vague and he couldn't quite connect everything, thought, oh, this is just another, like one of those stories about religion, and, and I, was, I was not interested in doing a film like that. Okay. So it took me like a year or two to like find a way through this because the story stuck with me, but I had to find a way to go through it and make it my own. And once I realized that I can make a story about fear, the fear of putting your life in someone else's hands okay. yeah. and miscommunication, I said, okay, this is it. But yes, it started from a radio documentary, yes. Okay. It's okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank You're you very awesome. kind. Your movie is spectacular. And I'm Laura Della Corte, Fred of Film Radio, the Festival Insider, Venice 79.